Hello everyone, welcome to the Linode Linux Server Security Series. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at IP tables and how to set up IP tables uh, and the various firewall rules. Um, so again, IP tables can be a little bit complicated uh, if you're unfamiliar with the lexicon that is used or the nomenclature that is used uh, again in regards uh, to tables and chains. And that's primarily why we're going to start off uh, by, uh, of course, understanding uh, exactly how IP tables works uh, from a uh, from a very broad uh, perspective. And uh, we'll then move on to the syntax and how to set up the various rules. All right, so the first thing we're going to start off with, as I said, is to understand uh, exactly what IP tables is, how it works, its relation with NetFilter. And I'll be using the whiteboard to explain all of this. So firstly, uh, what is IP tables and what is its relation to NetFilter? Because a lot has been made about its comparison or uh, whether or not there is any difference between NetFilter and IP tables. Well, NetFilter on Linux is the firewall framework uh, and IP tables is a utility that is used to manage and control NetFilter. So again, IP tables is not uh, is not just a, a firewall or just is not just responsible for filtering traffic on a system or a network. It also deals with important aspects of networking like NAT connections, like the ability to modify packets to act as a router, so on and so forth. All right. Now, IP tables can be used to uh, it can be used to filter both incoming and outgoing packets. And as I said, it can also be used uh, to route packets on a network similar to what a router would do. Uh, when we talk about IP tables, a very, very, very uh, clear uh, picture that comes or a term that you will come across a lot is the use of tables. Right. And you might be thinking or wondering to yourself, why uh well, why is this 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 term or word used why is tables used right and uh, that's very very simple I'll, I'll get to that in a second but uh you can see that even with this image that we have here uh the 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 use of tables and chains is here so when we talk about tables a table within ip tables is a collection of chains that serves a particular function or uh, is responsible for doing or handling a certain aspect of networking now, in the context of IP tables and within this image, you can see that we have three tables here. We have the filter table, we have the NAT table, and we have the mangle table, right? And they're all responsible for doing different things. The filter table is responsible for filtering incoming and outgoing traffic. This is the table we're going to be looking at and focusing on within this video. All right. And as you can see, filtering is a very simple word to understand. This deals with the firewall aspect, right? So uh, hopefully you can see my uh, really poor handwriting. Uh, we then have the NAT table. The NAT table is used to redirect connections to other interfaces on the network. We're not going to be using the NAT table because, again, that really doesn't help us in regards to securing services uh, on our target or on our server. We then have the mangle table. The mangle table is interesting, but again, we're not going to be looking at it. The mangle table deals with uh, modifying and, um, and and changing various aspects of a particular packet or a connection. So we're only going to be focusing on the filter table because that is where we actually deal with uh, filtering incoming and outgoing connections. Now, so that's tables and that's how uh, IP tables handles complexity by categorizing a unique, fun uh, a unique piece of the functionality of networking in the form of a table. So filtering, uh, NAT connections and the ability to mangle or modify packets. Now, when we talk about chains, um, chains are very interesting. Chains can be seen as tags that define and match packets to their state. So for example, within the filter table, we have the input chain, we have the output chain, and we have the forward chain. And from this, we can pretty much understand what each of them is responsible for. Each of them is responsible for processing packets based on their type. So for example, packets that are being sent into the target will be processed by the input chain. Packets that are being sent out of your server will be processed by the output chain. And then packets that are being forwarded from one computer to another using your computer or your server uh, will be processed by the forward chain. Now, we are only interested in uh, the input and output chain as they deal with in e they deal with ingress and egress traffic. So traffic coming in and traffic uh, going out. And uh, again, 
just so you understand the table deals with the unique functionality of the off networking so filtering deals with incoming and outgoing traffic nat is with uh, you know connecting various devices together and mangle modifying packets then each of them has their own chains based on what they are responsible for doing so it makes sense that within the filtering table we have the input and output chain and we also have the forward chain within the NAT table it makes sense that we have the output chain we have pre-routing the pre-routing chain as well as the post-routing chain so uh, let me just explain what the pre-routing chain does we're not going to be looking into it but it's a very essential that you understand it and it will help you understand what's going on so the pre-routing chain is used uh, after the packet has entered the network interface. So again, this is the pre-routing stage. So this is before, uh, before the packet is sent out of the network interface. And this is just when it's been sent into the network interface. And then of course, post-routing is uh, before the packet leaves the network interface after the routing decision has been made. So pre-routing is when it just gets into your target and uh, post routing is after the destination has been decided and uh, just before it leaves your network interface all right so that's very very simple and again you can see it uh, it it is also found within the mangle table and uh, the mangle table as i said is used for modifying and mangling uh, packets and connections so uh, again the input chain i'll just go through that one more time the input chain is used to manage incoming packets and connections uh, to a particular service or protocol uh, the output uh, the output chain is used uh, for outgoing packets after they have been created or processed and then the forward chain is used to forward incoming packets from their source to their destination so if a packet is sent to you and it and the destination is not sent to is not set to your ip uh, and you're just forwarding it the forward chain is the one responsible for managing that all right so now that that makes sense and of course now that you understand how this is all handled we now need to understand the flow of a packet uh, as it comes into a server and how it's processed that way. Now, when, when we talk about the chains, uh, within a particular chain, we're obviously going to have what you call, uh, we are obviously going to have what you call rules or firewall rules. So firewall rules, right? And your firewall rules are responsible for managing the input and output of packets uh, you know into and out of your server so when you talk about firewall rules an example of a firewall rule would be uh, i want you to block any incoming ssh connection so i can say block ssh connection right and that's a rule that's a, that, that's a very simple rule and of course we can also do it for outgoing and forward but let's focus on incoming i can also create another uh, another um, uh, I can create, create another firewall rule for incoming connections. I can say block uh, HTTP connections, right? And that is, is, is also uh, going to be found within the input chain. So uh, that means that any, I any incoming connection is, uh, that comes into the server will be handled by the input chain uh, on, uh, with IP tables. And the way traffic is handled with IP tables is within your input chain you'll have all your rules and the reason i've numbered these rules, rules is because the packet will be tested against each of these rules uh sequentially from the top to the bottom so right from the top all the way to the bottom so firstly if a if we have a packet coming in and it's requesting an, S, in, uh, an ssh connection it is going to be tested against the block ssh connection rule first and if it matches that a target is going to be set now when we talk about targets um, targets are very simple it simply refers to what is going to happen to that what is going to happen to that particular packet once it is matched with a particular rule so the targets that we have again are very simple we have accept uh, we have um, reject and we have drop right now accept will simply stop processing and will allow the packet to flow into the service that would, it was intended to so if we accept ssh connections uh it's, it's it's going to allow the packet to travel into the ssh service and it's going to be processed if we hit reject reject will drop the packet and it will send feedback to the user and drop will simply just drop the packet and it'll be like no packet was ever even sent to the to the to the server or to your particular computer right so these are the targets so again let me just explain the flow here 
So you send a an SSH connection or an SSH request into your into a particular server. Uh, the input chain chain will process the input and it will match it against the the various firewall rules that you've set. So we can say uh, one firewall rule is block SSH. Uh, it will check that packet if it matches against this particular rule. It will then uh, set the target and the target we set uh, right over here. So we can set the SSH rule and we can set the target for the SSH rule to be either accept, reject, block, etc. So if it, if it matches against this particular rule, it will then either accept, reject or drop whatever we specify. And that's how the, the, the flow of the, the packet is handled. Now, if, no, if, if the packet comes into the server and it does not match any of the firewall rules, it will use the default. Um, it will use the default policies or the default rule that we created. If there is no default rule, uh, the packet will simply be accepted by the system. So that's something you want to keep into consideration. Now, of course, this might be a bit confusing right now, but when we get started with the syntax, it'll all be cleared up. Right, so now that we understand the flow of packets, uh, we can now get started with the actual syntax. We'll take a look at installing it, uh, setting up the service, so on and so forth. So uh, I'm going to close up the whiteboard and I'll join you back into the terminal when we can get started with uh, getting IP tables set up. We'll take a look at how to set up all of the rules, so on and so forth. All right, so we're back in our Linux system and what I've done is I've just fired up a quick uh, or a small little Linode here and it's called IP tables. Uh, it's based on Ubuntu 20.04, so that's the distribution we're using. I, I've just installed Apache 2 on it and it's, you can see it's using the default uh, configuration. So the only reason I set up Apache on it is just to demonstrate uh, you know, how to block uh, and allow services from being accessed. Uh, in addition to that, the only other services that are running are going to be SSH. So we'll be using this particular Linode uh, for the demonstration. A key uh, point of importance here is uh, when it comes down to IP tables and the various other firewalls that are installed explicitly on distributions like Debian and CentOS, uh, with Debian and Debian-based uh, derivatives like Ubuntu, which is what we're currently using, uh, the default firewall that's going to be installed is going to be UFW or the uncomplicated firewall. Uh, if you're on CentOS, the default firewall uh, is going to be firewall D. Now, it is imperative that you uninstall any of these services because they all utilize IP tables or are all interfaces for IP tables and will all have been, uh, will all include uh, various IP tables entries or, or, or rules that will interfere with, uh, with what we're doing. So it's always recommended that when you're dealing with IP tables to, to actually start uh, afresh or to, to, to actually start directly from scratch. So if you're on CentOS, just uh, just, just ensure that you un uninstall Firewall D. If you're on, on Ubuntu, just make sure you purge uh, UFW. And uh, I'll just do that right now so I can say apt purge. And I've already done that. So uh, UFW, hit enter. It's going to tell me UFW is not installed. Uh, so on Debian-based distributions, you, uh, IP tables come, uh, and with most distributions, it'll come pre-packaged. So after you've uninstalled any of the uh, the default um, distribution-centric firewalls, you want to make sure you flush the IP tables uh, rules by using the IP tables command uh, with the uppercase F option, so minus uppercase F, and make sure to use the sudo command uh, if you're not the root user. In my case, I am, so I just hit enter and we're ready to go. Right, so if you don't have IP tables installed, you just type in uh, apt install IP tables and you should have it. You can then enable the service using system control enable IP tables. On, as I said, in most distributions, it's part of the kernel and you don't need to enable any of these services. So uh, we can actually get started now. Uh, to list out the default tables or all the tables, we simply type in IP tables and the capital L option. By the way, you can access all the documentation uh, using the man pages here. And yeah, so there we are. Uh, so if we type in IP tables L, this will give us all the various uh, chains for the particular table that we are using. Uh, by default with IP tables, uh, the table that will be used is going to be the filter table uh, and not the NAT or the... Uh, uh, it will not use the NAT or the uh, the Mango table. Uh, and you can see directly from here, we have the various chains that we saw within the filter table. We have chain input, the forward chain, and the output chain. So by default, we're using the filter table, which is great. 
so that will list out any of the rules that we have set here and the target. Uh, it'll also list out any additional information like the source and destination, so on and so forth. Uh, now you can see a very important uh, uh, a very important uh, bit of information here. The default policy for all of these chains is set to accept. What does this mean? It means that all connections are set to accept and all of the uh, packets will be set to accept and will, will all be processed. So as it is, this current server is extremely insecure because uh, it's accepting all connections. So for example, if I try and access the web server, I can access it. I'm accessing the server via SSH. You, you, you get the idea. Uh, now, when it comes down to when it comes down to configuring IP tables and the default policies, when starting afresh, you want to ensure that uh, when you start off, you want to ensure that all your chains uh, have the default policy set to accept. Now, you can disable this if you're locking down your server. To do this, we simply say IP tables uh, policy, and then we specify the uh, the chain name. We can say we can start off with the input chain. We then specify whether we want to accept. Or drop it and in our case we can set the default policy for the input chain to accept it's already set that way so we can hit accept uh, and th that's going to set the uh, it's going to set uh, the this particular chain uh, the input chain to allow connections and as I said if you're locking down your server you can just change it to drop and that will drop any incoming connection so for example I can say drop here and if I try and refresh the web server here it shouldn't allow me to to get access and in, in in many cases it should actually just block my ssh connection which it has done and i've I have essentially just locked myself out so uh, i'll go back into uh linode here and i'll just open up a console using the weblish uh, service here so i'll uh, just log in and i'll just i'll change that back to um to accept so specify my password here and uh, there we are so i'll just zoom in so you can see what i'm doing and we can clear that out so we will say ip tables um policy and we specify the um uh, the name of the chain in this case it's input and we can then set that to accept and hit enter and uh oops my bad that is the incorrect uh spelling of ip tables um so ip tables like so hit enter and now we should be able to get uh, access for ssh so i'll just try and open up a new terminal here because that one is frozen out um so there we are just try and zo zoom in um like so and we can now try and log in so we should be able to get access now uh there we are so put in my password and uh fantastic so again if i say ip tables um L, you can see the default policies have been set to accept so on and so forth so uh, we can also do this for the output uh, the output chain and the, the forward chain uh, so we can deny connections that way uh, if I if I just go to the web server I can just confirm that I now have access to the web server there we are um, there we are all right so that is how to change the default policies it's recommended that you keep them uh, to accept first and then you you reject or you block the connections you don't want uh, the public to access uh, right so when we talk about the syntax and the various other options or the various other commands we can do let's get started by first blocking connections or allowing connections from a particular ip address so for example if i want to um if i want to block an ip address from um if I want to block an IP address and I want to uh, block the IP address from actually um, from actually making a connection to uh, to the server, we specify the following option. So we say IP tables. We then specify the input option. Uh, and when we talk about the input option, we can append to the to the particular chain, or we can insert uh, we we can insert this particular rule to the top. Remember, I said uh, during the presentation that rules can be appended at the bottom or to the top of the list, and they'll be processed that way. So, if we want to insert one to the very top, we use the I option, so minus capital I. If we want to append, we use the uh, minus. Uh, a and these are all in uppercase so in our case we're just going to insert it to the top right because we want this uh, first and then we specify the name of the chain so we can say uh, input and uh, if we want to uh, specify the ip uh, so the source um, so the source ip we're going to set to uh, we can set it to whatever we want uh, so for example i can set it to 10.0.0.1 that's just a an ip that's non-existent of course 
and I then specify the target, which is done by using the minus J option. And the target is either going to be accept, drop or reject. Uh, and in our case, we can say we want to drop that packet. So this will drop any connections to the target from the IP 10.0.0.1. All right, so let me just zoom that in so you can see it much clearly. So if I hit enter, it's going to add that. And if we list the options now, you can see for the input chain, uh, it's going to it's going to drop it and the protocol is all will I'll take a look at specifying the protocol shortly the source IP is set here and the destination is to anywhere on the target uh, regardless of the port or, or the service uh, so again I'm not going to block lock myself out because I then have to go and reset it and so on and so forth so uh, what I can do uh, is we can now take a look at um, at uh, allowing or blocking connections to a particular Port. Uh, but of course, when you're talking about blocking uh, IP addresses, we can also allow IP addresses. And uh, we can, when we're talking about networks, we can specify an entire subnet. So again, I can specify the subnet as is. And if we list out the options, the subnet will also be added. So that's just an additional option you can add. Uh, and uh, this is just this is just in regards to blocking. Now, when you when you talk about uh, deleting particular rules uh, or deleting particular um, policies, what we can do to delete them is uh, we can say we can list out the options or we can list out the various rules using IP tables L and then specify the uh, the option line numbers. And this will number the options for us. And we can see we have option number one and option number two here. So we can then say uh, IP tables uh, use the minus D to delete an option. And then we specify the name of the chain uh, from which we want to delete the rule from. So we can say the name of the chain one, hit enter, that's going to delete that rule. And we hit one again, that's going to delete that rule again. And if we now list out the options, we now have none. Fantastic. So that is how to allow or block IPs. As I said, if you want to allow one, you just specify the uh, the target as either uh, accept or reject. So that's entirely up to you. Um, so the target is very important. Now, when you talk, when we when we talk about uh, allowing or accepting or rejecting connections to particular ports, we can also uh, specify the um, we can also specify that. Uh, but we need to specify the protocol. That's very important. Uh, so. Before we move on to ports, uh, if we want to block uh, an outgoing connection from the server to a particular IP, we can just say IP tables uh, I and then we specify output, right? So that is the output chain. So output and then we specify the um, the source uh, or the, uh, the the actual destination IP. So uh, it's very simple to do that. But let's move over to ports, which is where things get very interesting. Um, so if I want to block SSH connections or connections to the web server, um, what I can do is I can say IP tables, uh, I, and we say input the name of the chain. We then specify the protocol. So the protocol can either be TCP or UDP, depending on the port being used. In our case, we know the SSH port is TCP. We then specify the destination port, which is uh, done by using the uh, two hyphens and D port. Uh, so the destination port can be port 22 or the SSH port. In our case, let's just specify port 80 uh, because we are blocking access to the web server. And then uh, we specify the uh, the target. In our case, it's going to be J. So that's the target. And we say drop. So that's going to block any connections to the web server. We hit enter. If we now go back into our web server, and I'll just close the console here. And we try and reload that. Uh, you can see our access is now blocked. Uh, there we are. So we can make any, uh, any, we can get access to the web services. So this is great if you're a, uh, if you're an administrator or a developer, and uh, you have a website and you're currently working on the website and you want to you want to block access uh, to the public, and you only want to allow access uh, or you only on, you only want to limit access to your your yourself or your IP. You can do that really simply using IP tables. Um, so for example, if I want to enable a particular um, if I want to enable a particular IP to access the web server, I can simply just say IP tables uh, and then specify the input, uh, the input chain, the protocol, the destination port and the particular IP address it's coming from. So it's very, very simple. So I can say IP tables. Um, I can then say I. So input protocol is going to be TCP. Uh, D port is going to be 80. 
and then I can say uh, I can actually just specify uh, the source IP here so I can specify to my IP so what's my IP and um, I'll just copy my public IP here and I'll put that in there and then I set the target to accept like so hit enter and if I try and reload this right now uh, you can see I now have access but if I try and access it through another uh, through another IP address it will not allow me or if I'm uh, currently on the uh, if I was any other user on the internet I would not have access so that's how to accept and block uh, access to a particular port uh, a particular port or service and you can also limit it to one ip or to an entire subnet if you want um, so i can do that and that will just block the connection um, now when we talk about actually saving the rules because if i say uh, let's say i click ip tables if i say ip tables l if i just list that out um, you can see it's going to give me the uh, the actual the actual uh, rules here so we can see it's going to accept uh, my uh, it's going to accept my IP, so the source right over here to access the web server, and it's going to drop anyone else from from accessing the web server. Or well, if I want to save this, I can simply just say sudo uh, sbin, and uh, again I'm specifying sudo. If you have root privileges, you don't need to do that. And we then say IP tables um, save, and we hit enter, and that's going to save it. There we are, and uh, it's going to save those rules, and uh, that means that this is now persistent, so uh, you have now set the rules uh, the way you want. Um, okay, so uh, we've, we've taken a look at how to flush rules, so if you want to get rid of all of these rules, we simply say sudo uh, IP tables, or just say IP tables, um, IP tables F, and that's going to clear out all of the rules that you've created. Uh, you can also you can also delete individual ones as i've said um, so for example if i want to delete uh, all of these rules here i can say uh, i can list out ip ta ip tables l and then i specify the line number option so line numbers um line numbers like so and then i can delete the options based on their number so i then say sudo uh, ip tables uh, delete and then we specify the name of the chain so we can say uh, input here and we can then delete option number one and delete option number one again because number two is now moved to number one so hit again and if we now take a look at the uh, at the various rules we can now see we have none and then again i can save this using um sbin ip table save hit enter it's now going to save that and if i try and access this again you can see i now have access and anyone on the internet will also have access so using IP tables is really very simple. The syntax that you want to keep in mind is, uh, again, very, very uh, simple to understand. Uh, I'll just take you through it one more time. So we say IP tables. We then specify whether we want to append to the list or uh, we want to input or we want to insert a rule to the top of the list. And we can do that using A for append and I for, uh, for insert. Uh, we then specify the name of the chain. So for example, if I wanted to add um, one to, to output, so I can say uh, output, and uh, this is for the output chain. And if I, I can then block, I can then say uh, the source IP is going to be, um, let's see, the source IP maybe 1.1.1. I want to block connections, uh, the source IP 1.1.1. That's of course just an example. And then I specify the the uh, the actual target, which in this case may be accept um, or drop. So uh, accept, a drop, or reject, depending on whether or not you want to have an actual output. Uh, so I can do that if I want. If I want to block connections uh, from, uh, or if I want to block out outgoing connections, I can just specify uh, this right here. So I can just say the destination port, uh, so output, and uh, the destination port to, um, so I just say D port. If I want to block connections to any port 80, I just say D port uh, or 443 uh, for HTTPS connections, D port. Uh, and then I specify the target, which is then going to be drop, hit enter. And uh, looks like we have a few uh, syntax, uh, syntax options that we need to specify here. Right, so we need to specify the protocol, which in this case is going to be TCP. Just always remember to specify the protocol and hit enter and it should have added it there we are and uh, if i just list out the um if i list out the various chains you can now see it's added it to the output chain and it's going to drop connections uh, or outgoing connections from the server 
to any https based website so if i try and ping https um let's see hackersploit.org uh let's see if that actually blocks you can see well we don't have ping um so if i just say sudo apt install uh, net tools hit enter uh, hopefully that is able to install net tools there we are um so i'll just wait for this to complete and if we now say ping uh it's still telling me that the name or service is not known um if i say ping uh, localhost there we are so that's working um so you can see it's currently blocked any https website and it's not allowing me to ping hackersploit.org uh, so that is uh, very, very simply, and it's, uh, and uh, you know, to a, to a certain extent, uh, very uh, fundamentally, how to use IP tables, how to set up the various rules. Uh, hopefully, the syntax makes sense. Uh, I'll be attaching uh, all of the other additional uh, important graphics and illustrations that explain the syntax in depth uh, as a resource to this video. So you can check that out if you're interested. And I'll be seeing you in the next video.